the first speaker is Ariel Afek. He uh, graduated from the Ben Gurion University in Israel. And then he stayed in Ben Gurion to do a PhD under the supervision of uh, David Lukatsky. Their project was devoted to theoretical biophysics of DNA protein binding, and it was quite successful. Ariel published about 10 papers from his PhD and obtained a number of prizes, including the Wolf Foundation Prize for PhD students and the Israel Chemical Society Excellent Graduate Student Prize. And then he secured uh, several fellowships to go for a postdoc in the USA and spent uh, now already almost five years as a postdoc in the laboratory of Raluca Gordon in the Duke University. And his postdoc was also quite successful and supported by a number of fellowships. And currently he is supported by the Integrated DNA Technologies Fellowship. Uh, it's interesting to know that his research in the Duke University was devoted to the experimental uh, measurements of DNA protein binding. So he can do both theory and experiments. Uh, his current work has uh, culminated with the large paper that they published recently and which Ariel will present today. And I'm also happy to tell that from 1st October, Ariel is opening his own lab in Israel. So now I, I, I let Ariel talk about his science. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, very, very much uh, happy to be here. Uh, when I think about the three-dimensional structure of the DNA, this is the picture I typically have in mind, the beautiful canonical double helix. However, our own DNA in the crazy cellular environment is constantly going through chemical changes from damaging agent and from replication errors. And these damages often distort the DNA and can change the way DNA interacts with transcription factors. Today, sorry, Today, we'll talk about how we determine the impact of DNA mismatches on the interaction between transcription factor proteins, and how we use this information to learn about the structural recognition code of transcription factors. What exactly is a mismatch? Well, if we typically know that the fundamental unit of the double-stranded DNA are the canonical base pairs, A pairs with T and C pairs with G, and this pairs fit each other perfectly like two pieces of puzzles, then mismatches are the non-canonical base pairing, which can occur due to replication errors and damages. For example, where G pairs with a T instead of a C. In these cases, the two bases do not fit each other and the two pieces of puzzle do not match. These mismatches put our genetic information at risk and if left unrepaired, they can lead to mutations and the genetic diseases. Here I'm talking about how mismatches impact the binding of transcription factors. And you may ask yourself, why should we care about that? Why should we care about the binding of transcription factor to damage DNA? Transcription factors are the protein that control gene expressions in cells and their function has nothing to do with repair. During this study, we revealed several good answer for that with, and good reasons to study the binding of transcription factor to damage DNA. But actually what got us started, what initiates this project and give us the initial motivation were these findings. The findings from Professor Noria Lopez Bigas lab, where they saw in this very, very interesting paper, they noticed that in transcription factor binding sites, there are more mutations. And not only there are more mutations within transcription factor binding sites, there is also less repair. So if you look at transcription factor binding site compared to the flanks, it seems that the binding of the transcription factor somehow interfere with the repair and cause mutations. And th that was not only in this paper, there were several other papers that had similar observations where there are some connection between transcription factor binding and formation of mutations. And the hypothesis behind this paper, what Nuria Lopez Bigas have suggested, was the following. If typically repair enzymes repair the mismatch DNA or the damaged DNA, if transcription factor happens to bind the damaged site, they could serve as a roadblock 
they could reduce the repair efficiency, which in turn could lead to formation of mutations. But one thing was missing in the story. No one actually measured the interaction between the damage site and transcription factors. So this was not measured. And although we found this incredibly cool and interesting, it is surprising why should transcription factor even bind a damaged DNA? The damage really distorts the DNA and would completely change the binding site. Why should the transcription factor still bind there? Let's look at Mick. You see here, Mick recognize a very specific, particular set of sequences. And if, for example, CSCGTG, and if we make a mismatch, we would not expect Mick to match the mismatch. We would not expect transcription factor to bind a mismatched or damaged DNA. So for that, we developed a method we called SAMBA. Saturation mismatch binding assay. So this is an eye throughput method to measure the effect of mismatches in an eye throughput on the binding of transcription. I will not go too much into the details of the methods because we don't have a lot of time. So all, all the details are in this paper. But briefly, we are taking binding sites of transcription factors. In this case, 60 base per region from the genome. And in the center, there is the transcription factor binding sites. And we, I keep one strand constant, while the other strand, I have every possible variation. And in, in a protocol that I will not mention too, too much, uh, I'm creating a, an array, a chip that contains both perfect sites, perfect duplexes, and all possible mismatches mismatched duplexes on the same chip. Then, similar to what many of you may know as protein binding microarrays, PBMs, we incubate proteins and fluorescently label antibodies to follow the binding of transcription factor to all of these probes, to all of these duplexes, both the mismatched and the matched uh, DNA. So, and we have many replicates to each of these sequences, because we can have uh, we can have an array with millions of different oligos, millions of different binding sites, and then we get this kind of output. So the bottom line uh, from this protocol, we, we we can measure both the binding of certain transcription factor to its regular sites and each particular mismatch along this site, and this is the typical uh, profile that we get in this case. It's the profile we get for S1, S1's binding profile. What exactly do we see here? So in the x-axis, we see a region from the genome that contains S1 binding site in the center. So in the center here, you see one to 10 is S1 binding site. And what is the y-axis? The y-axis is the binding signal, signal comparison between the wild type sequence, the non-mismatch sequence, to a mismatch sequence. What exactly does it mean? Uh, if we are in zero, that means that there is no, different, no difference between the binding to the wild type and to the binding to the mismatch. If we are above zero, that means that a certain mismatch causes enhancement in the binding. It's enhanced the binding affinity and there is an increased binding signal. So this here are above zero, these are mismatches that cause enhancement in the binding affinity. And if we are below zero, we have a decrease in the binding signal and we lose the affinity because of the mismatch. So <clears throat> as I told you, we have a 50 base per region. The center is the binding site. You see that uh, the flanking sequence, the sequence that are not at the binding site, but flanking the binding site, we typically have zero. That means that mismatches outside the binding site rarely have any effect on the binding. Mismatches on the flanking sequence usually doesn't have any effect. However, within the binding site, within S1 binding site, most of the mismatches make a very severe effect, very significant effect. Most of them actually destroy binding. And that makes sense, right? 
you take X1 binding site, you make a mismatch, which really distorts the site, and you lose binding. That made a lot of sense. However, certain mismatches in the core of X1 binding site, in the most important positions in X binding site, actually cause enhancement in the binding infinity. That was very surprising, very exciting. And at first we just couldn't believe it, but we repeated the experiment over and over again, and we got the same. It's very robust and we got it for different binding site for ads. And we continued with additional transcription factor and for additional transcription factor, we always got the same. So here is an example from many other transcription factor, the binding profile we get from Samba. And you see that, that all, most of the mismatches for all these transcription factor reduce the binding affinity, but in every single protein, certain mismatches actually cause enhancement in binding. And I took more transcription factor for more, from different families of proteins with different fractions and always the same. For 22 proteins overall that we had in this paper, all of them showed that certain mismatches within the binding site cause enhancement in the binding effect. And not only that, something that was even more surprising, some, th these were all binding sites from the first place that became stronger after a mismatch. But here we have also examples for cases where you get a non-specific site. So this here is not an S1 binding site. And after introducing a mismatch, for example, this GG mismatch here, you get a very high affinity site, sometimes in the same level of the native S1 binding site. So you can form a binding site from scratch that doesn't look anything like the binding site we typically know just by introducing a single mismatch. So if transcription factor or bound transcription factor can be a barrier, these are the potential risks for formation of mutations. Both the non-specific that became specific and the binding site that became stronger binding, those might be a barrier. However, if transcription factor are no longer binding to a mismatch, this mismatch could be easily repaired and no mutation should occur. So to bind or not to bind, that is the question. That is the question that we need to answer in order to search for potential repair barriers and to predict formation of mutations. But why? Why should transcription factor even bind? What is the mechanism behind that? When we explored the answer together with uh, Professor El Hashimi, Hashim El Hashimi and his fantastic group, we realized that mismatches actually provide a unique repertoire of deformed DNA conformations. For example, if you look here on the left, Watson Creek base pairing are all look very much the same. But the mismatch DNA, mismatch base pair on the right, all of them have unique uh, conformations. I will, I will take two examples to show you. So this is GC pair, the regular GC Watson Creek pair. If you change the C to a T, you get a wobble conformation where the GT is sheared and the DNA is get distorted, it gets bent. Go, going back to GC, again, Watson Creek pair. If you change a G to a T, a G is a purine with two rings, and you change it to a T, which have only one ring, you shrink the helix diameter by two angstrom. So you can shrink the diameter of the DNA by introducing a mismatch. But not only mismatches change the structure, deviation from ideal B form is common in most transcription factor complex. For example, in P53, we have two positions where the helix diameter is also shorter in two angstrom because of the P53. When P53 binds to the DNA, it shrinks the DNA by two angstrom, just like the mismatches. And the, these distortions come with an energetic cost. So by introducing a mismatch, we can actually bend the DNA. And we can bend it to a mimic distortion found in bound complex. And that will help us understand fundamental question in protein DNA recognition. For example, if we are going back to P53, 
I said, we have two position with reduced diameter in, P in P53, this position here and this position here. We see, we observe enhanced binding affinity from mismatches only in these two position where the diameter is short. And the only mismatches that cause this enhancement in binding are pyramidine, pyramidine mismatches like CT or TT, which those are exactly the mismatches, which I told you, reduce the diameter. So actually, by using a mismatch, we save P53 the energy to shrink the diameter. If normally P53 need to invest energy and shrink the diameter, now with a mismatch, we prepay this energetic. And by using this method, we now understand that the shrinking of the diameter by P53 is a major determinant of the recognition code for P53. We have similar example that I don't have time to get into with TBP. We also see that by destabilizing the, the uh, destabilizing TBP and helping it bend, we can uh, enhance the binding in a, in a similar manner, which was actually validated also by us in collaboration with Maria Schumacher, her, her Duke, where we crystallize the structure of a mismatch uh, complex to see that we really mimic the bound structure. And by that, we save the energetic to kink the DNA. So to summarize, Samba is a, the first I throughput assay for measuring the effect of mismatch, mismatches on transcription factor binding. Mismatch completely changed the protein DNA binding landscape. And sometimes it even lead to enhanced binding within the binding sites. And it could also lead to enhanced binding in completely non-specific sequences and create all of a sudden new sequences in the new binding site in the genome. The mismatches could lead to mutations and so TF binding could be a factor in mutagenesis. And the binding to the deformed DNA provide a unique way to dissect important component in the structure recognition code. I had the great pleasure in this project to work with a fantastic group of people. Here are some of them. Uh, my great advisor, Aluka Godan, our great collaborator, Hashim El Hashimi, Onglu and Atul from El Hashimi group that did fantastic work and, and uh, Harshit from our group that helped us as, as well and did amazing uh, work as well. And uh, we had uh, additional collaborators, Gregory Poon, Miles Pufel, Talia Ran and their lab, which also add a lot of contribution to this project. And we had, and Maria Schumacher, of course, with the crystal structure. And I would like to thank you uh, for listening. Um, here you can see uh, my son making some DNA damage himself uh, and distorting the DNA with this DNA gem damage. My son is a really natural damage maker. Uh, I'm planning a lot of damage and other cool stuff in the future. And I will be opening my lab in Israel next year. So if anyone here found this cool and would like to join me, please contact me. And with that, I will be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Ariel. That's a fantastic talk. Uh, so, uh, so let's have a look. Uh, in, we have some, some questions in the chat. We have, uh, so, so you can raise your hand. I, I remind everyone, you can raise your hand if you want to ask your question by voice and you can also write down the question in the q a box so the first question comes um, from uh, dom helminger uh, who asks high turnover of transcription factor binding is sometimes important for transcriptional activity so thus enhanced binding leads to more transcriptional activity that is a great question that uh, we would like to answer. We, we, never, we never measured uh, the transcription activity and it's very hard to follow that, uh, uh, at least with mismatch uh, in vivo. Uh, but uh, we expect that if, at least for mismatches that are not uh, easily, easily repaired, that it, it could affect uh, the transcriptions and maybe also other damages that are not uh, very quickly repaired. Could, could have, but this is a, a future direction. We, we don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. 
thank you so another question is can you adapt samba uh, assay to have a nucleosome mismatch array rather than only naked dna sorry again again okay. can you adapt this assay to have a nucleosome mismatch array rather than just naked dna ah uh, so to... so i understand that in, instead of naked dna you take you, you reconstruct a short nucleosome array and ah nucleosome okay yeah yes yeah. uh, it's a nucleosome on we in this area in the current protocol we we have typically have very short uh, dna 60 base pair uh, it's 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 difficult to do it's impossible to do nucleosomes array uh, in this length uh, it's also a future direction to to make it longer it's it's harder and it's it's really not trivial but it's it's a goal it's a goal but currently we are far from that from from this goal Okay, great, great, thank you. And then we have a question from Fabio Gomez. Uh, he's asking, hello, Dr. Afek, really exciting talk. Uh, do you think that Samba can be used to track, predict the evolution trajectories of a, a general regulatory network? We, 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 are, we are trying to, to, to look at, uh, at that. Uh, the, we think it could provide a lot of insights. There are other pieces of information that uh, that uh, are related to, to, to this and that could not be predicted purely by, by Samba, but we, we definitely see that we can uh, have very important insight in these directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. And then we have a question from Rini Shah, uh, who is asking, a great talk. I'm curious to know if there is a preference for the mismatches at the promoter or the enhancer or any open region uh, has an equal propensity. So does the, can you repeat it again, sorry, Vlad? Uh, is there a preference for the mismatches at the promoter or the enhancer? Yeah, well, I, I don't think this is, uh, this is known. Uh, so the mismatches that are formed from replication errors, um, I'm not sure if if there's they are not uniform. I don't know if they, they are really connected to enhancer or promoters. There are some mismatches that are caused more by damage, like demination, so demination methylated cytosines. So those could be affected by the methylation patterns in and some other factors. But I don't think it's it's a very clear case uh, for this in particular. But there are some damages that uh, I am going to to explore that are more abundant in uh, enhancers and promoters, yes. Thank you very much. And then we have a question from Tom Tulis, who is raising his hand to, so, uh, so maybe you could ask your question. Sure, thank you. Um, Ariel, beautiful work. Um, really enjoyed seeing this develop over the years. Um, the idea that flexibility is important for um, recognition sometimes in protein DNA interactions and you can change that by these mismatches is quite exciting. I just wanted to mention some earlier work from my group where we found that if you introduce Nixon backbone of a DNA protein complex, certain spots will enhance binding quite a bit. So it kind of fits in very well. Um, other ways of introducing flexibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's great, great to meet you again, Tom. And this time, not uh, not in person, but uh, virtually. And yeah, of course, uh, your your work, uh, uh, your work, and Rima Ross's work, and other other is 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 part of the the reason we started this project. And and yeah, Nick's are are even more fascinating in in the sense that they do not change the basis, and so they induce. The, the, the major thing they, they are doing right is changing the flexibility. We are, we are doing a, um, we are also playing with some geometries that are induced by the mismatches. But uh, NIX have, uh, have many advantages in, in that sense that you can, you can focus on the flexibility. And of course, uh, there are your, your work and other work that um, really started this project and uh, make the picture uh, more complete. Thanks, it's great. All right, thank you very much. So I, I think we, 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 have, uh, we have more questions, but I think we may not have time to answer them live. So Ariel will, will answer all of them uh, by, by typing. Uh, 
So thank you, thank you very much, Ariel. A great thank talk, a great talk, and I give floor to the next uh, speaker.